it's number one, I have the three ingredients that everybody has to have, that anyone has to have. Mediocre white guy. In order to hit a big in business like this. Hey guys, it's editing Nicole. So I wanted to record a preface for two reasons. Number one, this video was uploaded as a training to YouTube. What it actually is, is what's called a power hour. Now, I had never experienced a power hour and maybe you haven't either, but it's when network marketing people get together and work. So there is about a 25 minute period where this guy is staring at people and keeps chatting with them, interrupting them while they work and plays a vaguely Christian-y sounding rendition of knocking on heaven's door. So if you want to find a really low energy song, play it on loop and find a video of a man staring at you for 20 minutes, that will approximate the feeling. Now, I don't want you to feel that, obviously. So what I'm going to do instead is I was sitting there being tortured and then there was just moments of levity. So I'll just cut those together. The second thing is that throughout this call, I sort of learned that the people on the Zoom were actually vault members. So he has a program called The Vault. So people were paying to be on this call. And during it, you'll hear him say that he does a once a month, you know, super valuable training. And I think this was one of them. So he has obviously some recorded probably video content in a portal, but then he does these sort of once a month live calls that we're going to see here. So I wanted to look with you at his very terrible website and what people are paying to be in this group. Get your 90s gear ready, folks, because this website is a step back into it. Okay, first of all, look at that display issue of <laughs> the text going over other text. Um, at least there's good contrast. We'll give them that. Now, if you're looking at this and think, wow, this design feels chaotic. One of the reasons a design can feel chaotic is when there's too many fonts. So that top font is Roboto. That second font in yellow, which I'd never seen before, is called Concert One. Um, and then the other one right below it is another version of Roboto. It's just not bolded. And then the underlined uh, one where it starts, they say you have, is Lato. So there's three fonts before we even start scrolling. So as you see, this design is objectively terrible, right? Like stuff isn't lining up. So like watch this video, it looks like should be in this blue band, but it's above it. So there just seems to be some general alignment issues. Um, ugh. Grant Cardone quote. Another thing in design is like, notice that the quote has some space uh, where the T is in teachers, but there isn't the same amount of space uh, for the D and and. That's another way to look sloppy. Um, and then... This Grant Cardone thing is in yet another font. And yeah, so this is a giant, okay, right? We've seen a sales page before. We make you scroll all the value, blah, blah, blah. Look, it's worth $97. It always ends in a seven, right? Or a nine. And we scroll down. It's oh, it's $3,600 worth of training. Early access is $49 a month. So, so yeah, these people are paying a minimum $49 to be on this call. Okay. And just, so just be additionally enraged on behalf of these poor people, right? That not only is this guy going to be condescending and completely waste their time, he's also going to be ripping them off financially. All right, back to the original video. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Nicole Reacts, where I, Nicole, react to online marketing gurus that I find on the internet. My qualifications for snark and commentary are that I've owned a marketing company for almost 15 years. In that time, having worked with hundreds of clients on their marketing strategy and implementation, so I have a fair bit of content knowledge and experience in things like content marketing, social media marketing, email marketing, search engine optimization, website development, and that kind of thing. So today's person is Brian Carruthers. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his last name, but maybe we'll, he'll pronounce it in the video and then we'll know. Um, and, you know, there's a whole group of sort of gurus that I've been bookmarking because I haven't been sure if reviewing their content would feel like punching down versus punching up. Now, in case you're not familiar with that term, um, I think it's mostly used in comedy from what I can tell. It's this idea that in, we shouldn't be sort of 
snarking on or otherwise um, giving negative feedback to people who maybe are young and inexperienced, maybe who have very small audiences. So that's why on this channel, I always try to punch up with these really big gurus, right? And so Brian Carruthers, he is relatively small in terms of his audience size, but he does have a blue check mark. He has 13,000 followers on Facebook. And um, so his YouTube presence is kind of low, but his presence across platforms and as a network marketing D-bag seems to be prolific across sites. So I think this is still punching up. So today's training we're going to watch is about an hour long. And what I want to do, and I might record this in a separate video, but I want to get through kind of the training today. Um, it's an hour long and please appreciate this title. Now it's in all caps. So the whole thing, ready? Million dollar network marketing training, parentheses, free with three exclamation marks after it, all in caps. So um, the absolute cojones you need to pretend that your hour long training is worth multiple million dollars is amazing. I'm guessing this is going to be a mediocre white guy just based on the title. Not entirely sure. So as I mentioned, Brian Carruthers seems like he's a network marketing trainer, which means that he probably saw that he wasn't going to make his fortune in network marketing, but he could make his fortune training people on how they could grow their network marketing business. So we rank him on the same tier as people like Mr. Ray Higdon and, um, God, what are their names? There's so many of them now. <laughs> I'll put them on the screen uh, so you can see our little uh, guru pyramid. It's pyramid shape for a reason. So after this video, I want to look at Brian has these weird links listed on his Facebook profile. And we're going to look at them because I want to see who's behind these websites and what these links are about. So without further ado, let's see what Brian has to teach us. Now, this is you guys, it's worth multiple million dollars. So Get out your cashmere blanket, pour yourself some Dom Perignon on, put it on a gold coaster and let's uh, take a look at this video. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. The word foster mentor is really weird. When I think of like a foster parent or a foster family, I think of, you know, um, somebody who is taking care of someone who, you know, a, a child who's in transition, right? So they might be temporarily away from their families. They might be going through something and, you know, a foster family would take you in and would take care of you and make sure your needs were met. So to me, a mentor is kind of like an ongoing relationship. So someone who wants to be your foster mentor, what is going to take you in when your current mentor is, not going well, and then they're going to release you. I, I I don't know. It's just like a weird term to me. Oh, I'm just going to say that. And I think he's going to refer to it maybe in the video, maybe what it means. Um, I'd be curious about that. All right. Well, guys, we are live. It's <laughs> okay. When someone says they have a multi-million dollar training, I do not expect my grandmother's curtains to be behind them. Also, if you're going to be doing video work, again, I'm not an expert clearly. But I will say that if you're going to have a lighting source, having it either to the side of you or in front of you is going to give you better natural light. This set of windows behind him is uh, a little bit distracting. In the upper left corner, tell me that that I don't know if it's a picture frame. I don't know if it's like the zoom audience that's on a screen in the background. I don't know if it's going to move or not. But it doesn't it look like, you know, when people take a group Zoom picture and everyone's in their own little thumbnail? I think it kind of looks like that. So um, I don't know if we'll find out more about what that is, but it seems kind of out of place in this very light room to have that very dark uh, screen potentially. But let's continue. This guy does not look like he's worth multiple millions of dollars, but what do I know? It's your friend Brian Carruthers here, your foster mentor Carruthers. here. Uh, as a guiding force in your journey to build your empire with your network marketing business. And I am really pumped about oh, what we're going to do today. He's pumped. Uh, as pumped I promise too, for all of you guys that are inside of the vault, inside uh, of the you're vault, you're going to have a chance to uh, have an. 
I feel sorry for the people who are locked inside his vault. Hour every single month where we're going to do activity live. Ooh. Truly live activity. Now, I think that's really important. I don't know what live activity is or activity live is, but I wish he'd explain it. Important um, for uh, us to be able to get together and I can show you specific information, specific activities that you can do that's going to be IPA. You guys know what IPA is, right? No. no. Don't look at anybody else's answer. Okay. Uh, but if you're going to be working with me and I'm going to be working with you, I don't want to have to explain what IPA is every single time I ever say it. Okay. First of all, you uploaded this video to your YouTube channel. Okay, Brian. So you don't need to start us with SAS. For some people, this might be the first video they ever watch from you. That's why at the beginning of this series, I always introduce myself. I, I'm not all like, oh, by this video, you know who I am. No, a quick introduction, no big deal. Why don't you just explain what IPA is? Because I think it's India Pale Ale, which is a kind of beer, but clearly it's probably something else. So you can tone down the SAS, Brian. You can actually explain an acronym when you bring it up for the first time in a new video. The literal least you can do. So if you guys would, don't look at anybody else's answer, but okay. in the chat, in the chat, don't look at anybody else's answer. We get Type it. Type in what IPA stands for. So I'm not supposed to ask you what it is. I'm not supposed to look at anyone else's answers. I'm supposed to type what I think it is. Are you going to tell me what it is? Or am I just not going to know? And then you're going to bring it up again. And you're going to be like, I don't want to explain it every time. Well, explain it now then. Very curious to see who uh, all is on point with that. Now, let me just uh, do a screen share. And I am going to... Are we going to bet he has a, a second screen? Show you guys. Okay, it looks like he has another screen. Exactly what we're going to be doing today. Oh my God, this vault graphic is terrible. All right. So let me go ahead and pin this up here. All right, great. So I'm going to be doing something really cool tonight. And it's going to allow you all to learn and practice the most important IPA that there actually is. And that, Are you gonna tell us what an IPA is? That is the art of promoting. Now, on a scale of one- IPA doesn't stand something, promote. Oh, I think it stands for income uh, promoting activity or something or income, produ income producing activity is I think what IPA stands for in case he doesn't tell us. So uh, you're welcome for that. So it's the art of promoting. Okay. Income producing activities, I think what IPA 10. stands for. Uh, go ahead and drop in a chat on a scale of one to 10, what your level of skill is in the art of promoting. Oh, How like nine. How good of a promoter are you? Like, I'm good at it. Are you able to get your team members to show up to a conference call? Are you able to get your prospects to go get on a Zoom or to uh, show up to an event? So getting other people to do stuff is different than promoting. Promoting is putting the message out there, right? It's reaching out, it's building relationships, it's making, you know, making contacts. It's not about getting people to do stuff. That's different. Scale of one to 10. I see most people are under five. I see a seven and an eight. I would say I'm probably uh, about maybe a seven. And that's relative to other people. Okay, here's the thing. If I was in a network marketing company and you asked me the question, how good am I at promoting? I would probably say I was pretty low because the structure doesn't allow me to be successful. It doesn't allow most people to be successful. So yeah, these people are being honest with him, right? And they're being honest with him, not because they're not working hard and not because they're uh, not good at sales, but because the, the structure is not in their favor to actually be successful. Right. Relative to other people's uh, skill sets. So frankly, uh, I know I absolutely can and need to get better for sure. And so um, let me stop a video here. I guess people doing some gardening and stuff like that. So People doing some gardening here and stuff like that. Okay. What I, what I don't get is when people are recording a Zoom call and they have themselves. So what you can do in Zoom, which is what he's doing, is he's spotlighting himself. Okay. So that keeps him 
in the frame, regardless of what happens, right? So, you know, if someone coughs or something like that, you know, it's not like it suddenly switches over to that other person and then back to him. So he's spotlighting himself. You can, you don't have to spotlight one person. You can spotlight more than one person at a time in Zoom. So um, that way, if there's background noise or something like that, like it doesn't suddenly jar the video. But what I don't understand when something's going on is he's the only one who can see, right? These other people, everyone else is looking at him and his slides. So like, why acknowledge it? Why not just, you know, turn off the people's videos and just keep going? So, um, but I, it just look, I think awareness is really important to really understand, okay, how good or how not good am I at the most important skill in network marketing, which is the art of promoting. And so I'm gonna give you all an opportunity to learn how to do guerrilla marketing, guerrilla promoting. See, and this is why I hate the word guerrilla marketing. I had a client who was like really into using the term. When I think of guerrilla marketing, I think of like someone who um, does a sidewalk chalk mural of an advertisement or somebody who goes into a park and, you know, does a viral dance, you know, with a, you know, or something like that. When I think of guerrilla marketing, I think of cheap and sort of like impactful, right? Um, and I think of something like a little bit unexpected or novel. Um, so to me, guerrilla marketing isn't like texting and calling everybody, you know, it's approaching marketing in sort of a fresh way. It was a really like cool term in like 2007, 2009 ish. I feel like there was like a book around that time uh, that came out with that title that was super popular. But um, yeah, I, I feel like it's a term we don't really use a lot anymore. And I think the reason we don't use it anymore is because while these tactics are uh, interesting and cool for the average small business owner to implement a flash mob or something is um, impractical to do continuously or <laughs> in any kind of ongoing way. What does gorilla mean? It's hitting it from all angles. No, it isn't. All angles. Now, let me just say this, by the way. Um, I'm a big believer in being present where you are. So sometimes you'll hear me talk about this at the beginning of one of our sessions together. If you went to a, a therapist office, you're in therapy, you're sitting there with your psychiatrist or your doctor, and you're paying uh, $190 an hour to meet with that therapist, would you sit on that couch and pull out your phone and start reading text messages? Okay, so he's doing this kind of um, manipulation tactic where he's like, I want your undivided attention right now. The information I have for you is so valuable that you need to drop whatever else you're doing. If you go to therapy and you're paying for a therapist, like you don't take out your phone. This is equally valuable to that time. And I assure you it is not. By the way, like I have people who listen to this, you know, my videos, they're like, I was doing the dishes and I was listening to your video or whatever. And to me, if I'm secure in the knowledge or the entertainment I have to provide, I don't care what else you're doing if you're consuming my content. I mean, if you don't get everything from the video, like that's okay. So this guy is about to manipulate you into like not, you know, gardening while you're watching his video, not checking your phone, not having your camera turned off. So, um, and then I think afterward, he's going to say like, you should share about this training on your social media. I think those are the two things he's about to do. Answering emails, getting on Facebook. No, you'd be present because you're paying $190 an hour to try to get a result from that appointment. So what I want to encourage you guys to do is if we get an hour live every month, um, how important are you going to treat this hour? If you're only willing to give them an hour a month of like your knowledge, like, come on. I like to say knowledge like Ty Lopez does and I, I can never quite do it. So <laughs> why does Nicole say knowledge weird? It's because I'm trying to do a Ty Lopez invitation, but uh, yeah, an hour, he's going to give you an hour a month and it is worth multiple millions of dollars. But um, but yeah, when people do stuff like this, I think it's super manipulative. And honestly, if you were that interesting, people would be paying attention to you anyway. Um, but also people are allowed to be doing other stuff. We live in a busy world. We have dogs to walk. We have dishes to wash. We have laundry to fold. Um, these are, we have lawns to mow. These are times I've been listening to videos, right? So 
this guy just needs to get off his freaking high horse. Are you going to have other tabs open on your computer and be doing other things, multitasking? Are you going to be answering? I would be if I wasn't recording this video. Phone calls, text messages, dealing with the kids. I, what I would encourage you to do is be present in everything that you do. If you're hanging with your kids, do nothing but hang with your kids. Bet you a hundred bucks that this guy is answering DMs while his children are at the playground. Bet you. Hang with your spouse, be present with your spouse. Building your business, build the daggone business. In a coaching session, get coached, right? So with that being said, guerrilla marketing, guerrilla promoting, uh, hitting the prospects or the people from every angle. Now, as you see on the screen there, I would encourage you to take a few notes on this. I mean, of course, it, you probably won't have a hard time remembering because it's not that many. So you have a whole hour long training and they might not have to take notes because there's really not that much to remember. Okay, so how valuable is it? Why does it have to be stretched out into an hour? Uh, angles. Um, you can certainly post about something on your social media. A few eyeballs. Okay, you guys, we're five minutes in. And did you know you can post things to your social media? By the way, social media algorithms are not very friendly these days. They don't show very many people your stuff. Okay. They seem to treat mine just fine. Maybe if your content was good enough, they'd show your content. So if you have a thousand friends, you might have 40 of them that actually will be shown something. Like your, your, your post will show up in their news feed. Maybe 40 out of a, out of a thousand. So do you post on social? Yeah, you still do. You still want to reach those 40. All right. So the general rule of thumb is that between one and 3% of your organic audience see something, right? You know, if nobody interacts with it. So let's say you had 100 friends. That means one to three of them would see the post. If you have a thousand friends, between 10 and 30 would see the post. So he's not, he's not entirely off here. Now, what happens when someone interacts with it, obviously. So if someone likes the post or leaves a comment, suddenly Facebook is like, oh, maybe it's more relevant and it shows it to more people. So that's why these people love engagement. And that's why I also love engagement. So feel free to, I don't know, type a one in the chat. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, you can uh, email blast out a promotion if you have an email list and a way to blast it. <laughs> Email blast is the technical term that we use. <laughs> um, you can send a direct message through Facebook or Instagram. Sliding into the DMs. Using Facebook Messenger. Uh, or you can make a phone call or send a, an individual text to somebody. Uh, I'm a big believer still in phone calls. Um, if you're going to text, you can either text them a, an actual written text message. You can send them an audio message. There's nothing that marks an MLM person more than the voice text. I don't want to listen to a voicemail and I don't like getting texts. So basically it combines the two things I hate the most into one. I don't want to listen to a whole voice thing. I really don't. And I don't know of anybody besides someone who's trying to sell me on network marketing that would send me a voice text. Or you can send them a video message. Uh, believe it or not, uh, video is the best. And then audio message is second best. And then a written text message is third best. Now, I'm going to give you guys an idea of what we just did within my particular team in my, in my company. Uh, I got permission. Well, let me back up. Uh, I, I've, I've had a lot of success in this business. You guys have had so much success. Okay. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag MLM for life. Hashtag my team is awesome. For a few reasons. Number one, I have the three ingredients that everybody has to have, that anyone has to have. Mediocre white guy. In order to hit it big <laughs> in business like this. You have to be number one. You have to have a burning desire. Check, I had that. That's right. You need a burning, burning desire. <laughs> number two, you got to be willing to work. Check, nobody's going to outwork me. Number three, you've got to be coachable. And I was extremely. Number four, you have to have joined early on in the game. Number five, you have to have a tremendous amount of luck. Come on. Oh, God, these people. It's what they don't say, you know? And I will say my one issue with the whole, like, you know, you get out what you put in is that whenever someone is successful, they feel like it's because it was entirely in their control. And so when they start failing, 
they have an identity crisis because if they think everything's within their control, they think their failure is within their control. When in reality, it's a lot more random than that. Coachable. So on the coachability side of things, I had some good mentors. I had a few good upline people in my network marketing career, my upline leadership. I learned a lot from them. Um, but I also found that it was helpful to get mentorship from beyond them. And so uh, there would be, I, I. He was, he thought it was helpful to get mentorship. He has mentorship to sell you. Okay. That's why it's like, oh, it was so helpful to get mentorship outside my team. Guess what this guy has to sell? I would read books. Robert Kiyosaki. I listened to Jim Rohn. I would listen to old Amway tapes and videos, believe it or not. Um, I, you know, I Art believe Williams, it. Um, you know, the founder of A.L. Williams, which is now Prime America. I mean, I learned from some major, major mentors. And so because of the coaching I got, I applied it in my business. I became better. And therefore, my business got better. And you probably heard it before. Build the people and the people will build the business. As the leader of, of any organization, I think it is your job to support your team, to get them feedback, to get them training, to um, encourage them to step in if a client or a customer is being unreasonable and, you know, they shouldn't have to take that. I do think in these structures, these network marketing structures, what's interesting is like you're the leader, but the people below you are paying you. So whereas in a traditional job, right, if I have people who work for me, I pay them and they do their work, right? Like the money is comes from me. And so the leadership comes from me. In a network marketing company, there is somebody who's seen as the leader of a team, but the money actually comes from everybody below them. So in reality, those people should kind of be the boss of the leader. But that's just my opinion. I don't want to go too fast beyond that because that's really important build the people and then they will build the business. So if you find prospects and you recruit people on, on your team, who they are at the beginning, they're just nothing but raw material. They're like clay and you can help them mold themselves into a superstar. So to me, you only mold someone and whatever, if they actually ask for that kind of feedback and training. There's nothing wrong with me uh, giving feedback to somebody that I work with and say, oh, hey, like we need to rewrite this or whatever. What I think there is something wrong with is pretending I'm molding them into something like that's gross. Uh, and that creates this weird power imbalance or this structure where I think I'm better than them. And that's just gross. A powerhouse, a powerhouse entrepreneur, you know, a, a super impactful person. Now, most people don't come into network marketing like that already. Sometimes you'll find somebody who's already gone and gone through the growth curve, but most people are not even seeking finding ways to grow like that as a person. They just want to go punch, punch a clock, get a paycheck yeah. and, and live their simple life. Oh, they just want to go put, get a paycheck and live their simple life. There is nothing wrong with someone wanting a paycheck. There is nothing wrong with someone wanting to get paid for the labor that they're doing. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you, do you live a very complex life, Brian? Is your life so complex that we would all look up to it? Come on. I bet your life is pretty simple too. Uh, but network marketing attracts people who want to be bigger, want to be better, want to do more, want to impact more. And so I'm saying all that to say. It exploits people who want to do more and impact more. I, I, I agree with it on that level. Uh, some of my mentors are on a documentary and that documentary is called rise of the entrepreneur my good friend eric worry spent months creating a documentary to explain the merits and the power of the network marketing eric war he self-funded a documentary i might have to put this on my list of things to watch although it's probably behind some kind of paywall but <laughs> that's hilarious in business model because we all know plenty of prospects and plenty of our friends and family that look down their nose at network marketing. 
right? I'm sure you guys have heard it many times, but it's something special. If someone looks down on something, it has to come from somewhere, right? And if there's multiple people or if there's enough of a culture that, oh, people look down on our industry, doesn't that make you question it a little bit? Doesn't that give you pause at least? When you've got Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, author, sold over 40 million books. You've got people like Harry. I did a video about Guy Kawasaki. And in that video, he talks about getting mistaken for Robert Kiyosaki. They're, they're two different people. I'll link to, if you want to go watch that broadcast, a Guy Kawasaki is super charming and knows a lot about marketing. Richard Kiyosaki, I don't know. He seems a little spammy to me, but. Harry Dent, one of the big, biggest economists in, in American history. You've got uh, Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen, uh, Success Principles and the Chicken Soup for the Soul series uh, authors. You've got uh, Les Brown. You've got some, uh, some of the, is there one woman in this documentary name one woman in network marketing that is seen as a thought leader, Brian, I would love it. If you named one woman, this industry is made up of millions of women, or at least thousands of them. In any case, most people in network marketing are women. Why is there not one woman thought leader? Um, professors from some big uh, universities in, in North America. Uh, you got all professors from big universities in North America. <laughs> Do they have names? Do they have specialties? All these people that are on a documentary talking about how amazing the network marketing business model actually is and why it's so good. And so I would imagine that there's two things. I would imagine you would love your team members. You're, you would love your team members to actually see that documentary. If Eric Warhe thinks network marketing is such a great business model, why does he not become a part of a network marketing company? Right? It would be like if I told you like, oh yeah, like giving up caffeine is the best thing I ever did as I sipped some coffee. You would wonder about that, right? Like, so... Somebody who is saying that network marketing is a great business model who is not in network marketing or sorry, who is not inside of network marketing makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's just under an hour, about 50, about 50 minutes long. If your team member saw it, I guarantee they're going to think more highly of their business that, they, that they've got. They're going to be more excited to share it with people and they'll be able to, number one, uh, overcome objections about network marketing a lot better. And number two, any objections or any stuff that comes their way, it'll roll off their back like water off a duck because the documentary actually gives them rhino skin. It makes them bulletproof. Or you could just be in a line of work that you don't need to be bulletproof or have rhino thick skin. I'm pretty, like, I'm really secure in what I do for work. So, like, I don't need constant validation that I'm not ripping people off because I'm not ripping people off. So, I don't know. If you're in a line of work that constantly makes you, you know, have to armor up and you don't want to do that, I don't know. You can just change the line of work you're in. There's lots of different kinds of businesses you can start where people are not going to constantly criticize you. Now, um, if, you've, if you have never seen this documentary yet, just type never in the comments. I want to see how many people who have not yet seen this documentary. Okay, we're 11 minutes in, and all we've learned is that we can call people, text people, DM people, send people an email, or post on social media. This is all we've learned so far. Also, like, is he like promoting the movie? Is that like what he's okay. doing? Wow, fantastic. So you guys are all in network marketing and the biggest documentary about our industry. You mean Lula, Lula Rich? Uh, a lot of you guys <laughs> have not seen Lula Rich is probably a much bigger documentary than a self-funded Eric Warhe documentary about network marketing. Seen it yet. Um, you're not going to get a chance to see it today. But I want you to understand when you watch it, you will get goosebumps and you are going to say, OMG, I have got to get every single person I know to watch this. 
You're going to want your team members to watch it. You're going to want your prospects to watch it. You're going to want your friends and family to watch it. So even if they don't join your business, at least they understand what you're doing and it's a great thing and they'll be more supportive. How cool is that? So I don't know what incentive this guy has to like promote the crap out of a documentary he's not even in or connected with, but here's what we're going to do. What I'm going to show that live tonight on the vault.com at eight o'clock Eastern. Oh. You're going to be able to see it tonight at eight o'clock Eastern. You're going to be able to invite everybody you can to come see it. I have to watch a booby with a bunch of people I don't know virtually. Ugh. For free. Well, can I just download yeah, the you movie? Might say, well, I, I'm going to go try to see if I can find it. Maybe it's on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, guess what? You might be able to find it on YouTube. Here's the problem with that. Um, if you find it on YouTube, the person who posts it has an agenda. You have an agenda. What are you talking about? So you don't want to send your friends, your family, your prospects, your teammates to a YouTube channel that somebody else has thrown up there because they're going to try to recruit them into their business. So it's okay for you to show a documentary, but it's not okay for people to go look for that documentary somewhere else because someone might try to sell them something that's not you. Oh, you're so gross. You'll be sending Brian. your sheep to the wolves. Sheep to the wolves? You your prospects to if it's if it's that good and impactful a documentary, wouldn't you not care how people saw it? What if people aren't available at 8 p.m. tonight? What if they want to watch it later? Or what if they want to like have a group party and watch it together in person? Like this guy, ugh. I can tell we're not going to learn much at this training. So it, it might also have on the side of the YouTube page a bunch of other suggested videos that might be some negative stuff about oh, network marketing. There might be negative things about right? network marketing so on the internet. I be going to YouTube and finding it there. Okay. Yeah. Don't use this world's second largest search engine to look for information because they might see information that's bad there. Okay. Well, if there's information that's bad, or if you're so confident that your stuff is good, like, what do you care if someone watches something that's critical of your line of work? If it's so good. I've got the permission from Eric Worre to show it live tonight at eight o'clock Eastern on the vault.com. I'm sure you did. So here's what we're going to do during this power hour. All right. For the next 45 minutes, take a screenshot. This is what you're going to say or send out. Not one woman name on this list. To as many people today as you possibly can. And I commend you, you guys, on a Saturday afternoon, or if you're on the West Coast, Saturday morning, or if you're in another country, it could be Saturday at night right now, okay? But the, I commend you for being here and leaning in to get coaching. You are coming to get coaching but remember, when we do power hours, we're going to do IPA income producing activity together. Okay. He just said what IPA is, which is income producing activity. 13 minutes and 38 seconds into this broadcast where he made a huge deal about IPA being really important and how you should just know what it is. So you're going to send this text message out. You're going to text it. You're going to direct message it, private message it through Facebook Messenger. If you want to send it out in an email blast, if you've got an email list, do that as well. If you want to throw this exact wording up on your social media. On Rather than having them take a screenshot, why not drop it in the Zoom chat? Like, why not copy and paste it into the Zoom chat? Like, as your producer or you could do that right now. And then they wouldn't have to retype it. That would be a, a consideration for the people on this broadcast. Your Facebook page, feel free to do that as well. And by the way, what do you what do you what do you notice here? It says, "Hey, there's a 50 minute hey, documentary XX. on how average." <laughs> I bet you, I bet you, at least one person sent it. it just said, "Hey, XX!" Exclamation. They didn't customize it. I bet you, at least one person did that. <laughs> Americans are becoming successful entrepreneurs, featuring Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, Les Brown, Brian Tracy, Eric Worre, Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, Harry Dent, and several others. I heard it's going to be awesome, and I thought you'd like uh, like to watch it watch it too. It's tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Let me know, and I'll send you the access link. It doesn't. Uh, you're not putting the link out there. See, we're marketers. We need to attract attention. We need to engage people. So you need them to say, "Me, 
Yeah, or you can just like put if you just want people to see the video, why not just put the link up? Why do I have to send you an awkward message? I want the link because you want to be able to follow up. Why just throw something out there if you can't engage them afterwards? Because I'm confident in my business being ethical and around for the long term. And that sometimes people need to just take in information and think about it first. And I'm not in any hurry to sell them anything. And that they will remember that I sent them this valuable information and come to me when they need marketing services. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to gatekeep information. I can just share information. And if people find it valuable, they'll reach, they'll reach out to me. I don't have to play any stupid games to get people to buy my stuff. So if it's a team member, you want to talk to them about it afterwards so you can get them refocused and engaged in their business. If it's a prospect, you want to see if you can get them to see information on your company and close them. If it's a friend or family member, and maybe you're not trying to recruit them, but you just want their support, you can talk to them after. Hey, wasn't that awesome? Now do you have a better, better understanding uh, and appreciation for what I do? No, I don't. So that's what you're <laughs> going to send out to people today. And by the way, we're going to do it together and we're going to have a contest. There's going to be a prize. Okay. And then here's the second. Here's the second. Uh, once somebody says me, yeah. Perfect. What if no one says me? I wonder if he has like a backup, uh, a backup answer if someone says no, or if they, you don't hear anything. Yes. Okay, great. Here's the link. I'm going to jump on five minutes early to be sure I'm in. Again, it's tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. The Vault.com. Have a great weekend. Okay. What I'm also going to do here in a second is I'm going to throw this into the chat. Yeah, so he wants you to send your customers and clients to his link where he can collect their information and upsell them. So that you can copy and paste it. Okay. Okay. He's going to put it in now, the chat so you can copy and paste it. about to share. And let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to throw it into the chat. There we go. I'm glad that we are cognizant that people don't have time to retype stuff if you've already typed it. So... And if, 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 by the way, if you're, if you're not in America, you don't have to say that, um, you know, the documentaries on how average Americans are becoming successful. You can just say how average people are. Yeah. If you're not American, you can take out the American part of it. Like, I don't know, people can write their own messages, right? Like people can read it and say, oh, like, I wouldn't say this exactly this way and write a message they would write. This is a, this is a template or a draft that they're working from, right? Not something they have to copy and paste, although you're making it sound like that. Becoming successful if you're in another country, all right? Now, let me go ahead and throw the first one in the chat. That's the first one. And then the, re the reply once- Also, if these people have millions of dollars, why not hire a Zoom producer for an hour? Someone who can keep an eye on the chat, someone who could be pasting these things in for you, someone who could be sharing your slides or asking you questions, Someone who could be like making sure the recording is a high quality. I don't know. Why not get a separate microphone? I don't know if he has a separate microphone. If it, does, it doesn't sound like he does. As I've established, I have my little $90 Sure microphone. Nothing special. But um, I feel like my sound's better than his. I don't know. Like I said, these people act like they have tons of money. And yet they go so low value on the production. It's, it makes me think that they actually don't have any money. So you say, yes, give me the link. And also the, like this video training stuff is your core product. Like why not invest in some lights or some, like, like I said, listen, I get it. I'm in my office. Um, but you know, I have a little, you know, area behind me. Uh, the lighting is adjusting a little bit uh, because of the time of day, but you know, I like, I don't know. I feel like I'm trying harder than him and I am not making multi uh, millions of dollars off of whoever is watching this now. I'm put that one in the chat. All right, so they're both in there now. Wow. Here's what we're gonna do. You get a cookie, Brian, good job. You're gonna start sending out these messages right now. Yep. And the goal is, is to get at least two people to join and watch with you tonight. Now, some of you guys are two, are you kidding me? All right, that's for, that's for somebody playing small. I'm going to get that's for someone playing small. I, I gave you a little goal because I know you're playing small 20. I'm going to, I'm going to say your goal is 20. Okay, Brian, I'm going to say that your goal is to uh, join a network marketing company brand new and make a million dollars. 
but you know what? That's playing small. So I'm going to make your goal $10 million. Get 10, whatever, you know, go for it. I mean, everybody you can get, I mean, don't you want your friends and family to be more supportive? Get them on there. Why aren't your friends and family supportive? I don't understand it. I've been running a business for 15 years. And you know what? When I first opened my business, my mom's like, mm, I'm a little bit worried about you being self-employed because she ran a business with my father for years and she knows what it's like, the uncertainty of income and, you know, all that. So she was a little nervous for me, but she didn't actively discourage me from it. She just said, listen, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little worried about it, but you know, you're, you're smart and you're, you know, a hard worker. And I know that if it doesn't work out, you'll get, you'll do something else. You know, that was the amount of resistance I got to starting my business. Nobody else had any other opinions about it. So if people are actively reaching out to you and worrying about your business or opposed to your business, ask yourself why, because they probably have valid reasons. Right. You got prospects that you want to follow up with and you just didn't know how to follow up with somebody who's already checked out your info and hasn't signed up yet. This is a huge opportunity to, to uh, circle back to those people. Okay. And whoever uh, actually circle gets back. the most yeses that say, Hey, I, I will attend tonight. I'm going to send you a, uh, the limited edition hardcover. This is the hardcover edition. I'm going to send you a book. I paid $8 to print. <laughs> Of wow, it's hard, empire. hardcover. Oh, look, look at that stock photo cover. God, ugh. That's right. I'm going to send you a free copy of my book that I probably paid eight dollars for, or, or I'm going to stick it in the and I'm going to stick it in media mail, uh, for you know two to three dollars in the United States. So this this free thing I'm going to send you for doing all this work is probably worth, you know, eight dollars maybe, <laughs> maybe ten on a good day. Next level edition. Uh, I'm going to send you a signed copy of that as signed. a prize for whoever gets the most people who say, yes, I will watch with you tonight. Okay. So go ahead and start firing away and in the chat when we do, and here's what's powerful about a power hour. When you're doing it together, it's easy to just sit there, look pretty and not do anything and just listen to me talk. Are you seeing me through the thing, Brian? But we're here to build your business. Oh, okay. And I got to build my business. It's fun doing it together and reporting in that accountability <sighs> part. It causes you to like, okay, I brought us doing, I'll do it too. And then you start getting some results and you start, you know, giving, you know, giving yourself a shout out on, on, on chat. How cool is that? If anybody watching this has ever attended a multi level marketing power hour, I would be so curious how that went for you like you know if you were recruiting people or if you were dming people on instagram you know dming people on instagram or if you were um i don't know producing a bunch of content for your social media i'm just really curious like you did the power hour once twice multiple times i don't know what were your results from those power hours feel free to leave it in the comments and uh maybe if someone wants to talk longer form about it i would love to have you on the channel so uh, Ace Bear says, are you able to put the script text back uh, back in, please? Uh, Ace, do you see it right above you in the chat? Hopefully you guys can see the, the scripts in the chat. If someone, by the way, if someone joins a Zoom meeting late, like let's say that you shared like the meeting notes or something as a document and someone joins like five minutes later, they can't see anything you've posted previously. So what you want to do periodically is reshare important stuff in the chat. So for example, if I'm doing a presentation and I have slides, I share them at the beginning because there are some people who like, they want the slides, they want to see them right away, they want to follow along with you. And then every five or 10 minutes as I see new people join, I, put, I just put the, the notes in the chat again, notes in the chat again. And that way they can see them as they join. So if this guy joined late um, or joined after he pasted the text into the chat, he just can't. This, the guy watching just can't can't see the chat because you can't see the history from before you, before you joined the Zoom call. I'm going to share the screen one more time. If you guys want to get a screenshot, you can certainly do it that way as well. Or you can just repaste share, it in again. Share screen. Yeah, what I do when I have like notes I'm going to share a couple of times is I have a document off screen in my second monitor and I just have everything kind of ready to go. The other thing with with Zoom is you have to put the full link in. You can't just put www, you know, it's gonna, you have to put http dot slash slash. You have to put the full link in. 
So what I do is I get all that stuff ready and I just paste it into the chat periodically and I have it off screen ready to go. So I don't have to retype it. I don't know if the power hour is just going to be us. All right, here's the script one more time, guys. Sitting on silent. There you go. Take a screenshot with your phone if you want to do it that way. If you didn't get it out of the text, uh, out of the chat. I like how Keep this up for I like how it's like Mark Victor Hansen. I have no idea who that guy is. And then it's like Harry Dent, parentheses, famous economist. Do we not need to know who Mark Victor Hansen is? Like, does everybody know who that guy is? I know Jack Canfield from the Chicken Soup. Um, and I don't know who Les Brown is, but I do know the name Brian Tracy, but I'm not entirely sure how I know that name. I, I if you if you explain who some people are and not who other people are, I think it's a little confusing. For about 30 more seconds, and I'll give you the second one, and then we're gonna start start having at it. And by the way, copy and paste. When you type it in, obviously you don't call somebody XX. Yeah, you want to actually, hey, Bob, hey, Cindy, hey, Michael, hey, Doug, right? So you want to make sure you, you customize it with their name and send it out. So if you're doing this crap over email, by the way, um, I don't know if I want to tell network marketing people this, but there is a technology called Mail Merge where you can mass send emails and you can have these fields where you personalize. So it's like, hi and then you put in brackets first name and it pulls the first name from the first name column of the spreadsheet that you're referencing um there is i think it's yam.com my friend matt showed it to me i'll put it in the in the, in the show notes in case you want to check it out it stands for yet another mail merge y-a-m-m.com and it works with google and it works with google drive so basically you can make like a spreadsheet and then you can mass send emails through Gmail. And my friend Matt uses it for his neighborhood. Um, like they have like a, a neighborhood association. Um, and there's, you know, um, I don't know how many people in it, maybe like 50 or so. And while you could copy and paste a bunch of emails about the upcoming block party individually, you can run a mail merge and you can send all those emails individually. You can't use mail merge for things that are like sort of like I said, the neighborhood block party that happens once a year is a fine use of mail merge. You do not want to use mail merge for marketing emails. Like that's against the user policy of it. But there are times I'm sure where you're thinking, geez, I need to email all the parents in the PTA this key information or something like that, where a mail merge might be actually helpful. So I didn't know it existed. Once Matt demoed it for me, I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm telling you about it in case you think it's cool too. Um, so if you ever get emails and it's like, hey, so-and-so, and it uses your name and there's nothing else personalized about it or not much personalized about it, um, they're probably using mail merge to send that to you. Once you've copied it, then you paste it, change the name, send. Paste it, change the name, send. Paste wow. it, change the name, send. Next one here is right here. That's the second one. Your paste it, change the name, send. One. You want that one. <laughs> How many people can you get on this Zoom tonight? And I How many people can you get to my link where I'm going to collect their information to send them the Zoom link? I was, I was uh, making plans with my wife, what we're going to do this evening. Maybe take the kids out and get some dinner together. Um, we just, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to make some plans. I told her, I said, hey, we'll do something tomorrow. But tonight, I just need an evening because I need to do this with the vault members to be able to actually do the showing of the documentary. So I'm giving my night to this. So today wow. I'll be inviting some of my own. I'm giving my night to this. He's making money off you. Of course he's giving his night to this. Friends, prospects, and teammates to jump on there tonight. Okay. I'm going to build my business today. How much, how much are you willing to sacrifice some of your time? Yeah, you probably heard this. You probably have heard this before. Maybe not said exactly this way. Sometimes you have to sacrifice the very thing that you want to get what you want. What is he sacrificing that he wants to get what he wants? He's getting everyone to go onto his Zoom thing where he can like export the, you know, attendee list and stuff like that. Like he is in all the control here. What is he giving up? I don't understand. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your time to get time. You want time freedom? You have to give up some of your time right now to get ultimate time freedom. Time freedom. <sighs> if 
financial freedom and time freedom. If you ever hear those phrases, I'm like, oh, my little MLM alarm goes off. All right. So you guys got what you need. Stop the share. And now we're back. And so as someone who has a lot of control over how I spend my time, I do not feel like I have complete time freedom because I have things I need to do in my life. We all do. I am going to be watching the chat. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat. What do we have questions and on? As you guys, and I want you to mass promote this video I'm showing on my channel. Do you have any questions? What do I, uh, what do I get out of it? Um, besides getting everyone on board with my network marketing company? Like what, what do I get out of it? I am, I'm, I'm a little unclear here. And the, uh, the documentary is just about 50 minutes, 50, 52 minutes, something like that, just under an hour. But tell people it's 50 minutes because if they think it's going to be longer, you say an hour, an hour sounds long. So yeah, so lie to them about how long it is and say it's 50 minutes, even though it's longer, because telling them it's an hour, they won't want to come. It's going to race by, by the way. You're, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, it felt, it'll... Jack Canfield and Eric Warhe, I'm sure it's going to race by. It'll feel like about 25 minutes. It's, it's just... <laughs> it'll feel like 25 minutes. What does 25 minutes feel like? It's so stinking good. All right. So, so good. So please start reporting in as you guys are firing out these messages. Brian, what are you going to do while I send mass messages to everyone I know? What are you going to do in this period? Messages. It's going to sit and here right awkwardly. now, just do the texting and the, and, the, and the private messaging. Don't send emails right now. You need uh, to as only far do... As making phone calls and other stuff. And, 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 and Look, I, I shouldn't say that. If you want to go ahead and throw it up on... Yeah, if you want to be able to do something, don't micromanage how they're going to do it. Like they're doing free promotion for you. They can do it however they Facebook want. Facebook right now, go ahead and go ahead and rock and roll, do that. But whatever you're doing, just to be, just to inspire others, go in the chat and let us know what you're doing. Hey, I just posted on Facebook. Hey, I just recorded a video, uh, a video message and sent it to one of my friends on Facebook. How can they record a video message when you're in the background talking to them and they're supposed to be giving them... At the beginning of this, he said we needed to give him his undiv our undivided attention. And now he's like, oh, do this other thing. But also type in chat what you're doing. Okay, so do you want my undivided attention or not? Shouldn't I be paying attention to the task of what I'm doing? Well, I've been trying to prospect. Whatever. Just tell us what you're doing play by play. Are you just going to sit here silently? I see Barbara on here. Bill Rand, Carl Peterson, Brian Standish. Good seeing a bunch of you guys on here. I'm just going to call people out by name and make them feel awkward about it. Damien, you're sending it out by, by text. Good stuff to prospects. And I've got a uh, really cool game and, and, a, and a drawing, a contest we're going to do in a little bit. I got some really cool prizes for that as well. Okay, we're doing a cool game, but you're giving away your... Will you just stop talking so I can send these messages to my entire family cool. We're having some friends? fun here today. Okay, stop the verbal patter and let people do their work. Dana Godfrey is sending uh, text messages... I don't care what Anna Godfrey is doing. Team and prospects. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm answering some emails while this guy sits here awkwardly. But if this keeps going right, on. Here's our first one. Sandra Phillips already has one yes so far. Oh my God. Congratulations. I promise I will. Do it. I promise I will fast forward this if this keeps going on. Where okay. My What I'm constantly striving for every minute of every day. How can I influence somebody to do what I want them to do? Manipulation. I don't sit around thinking every minute of every day how I'm going to get someone to do what I want them to do. That sounds super crazy. <laughs> That's about marketing and promoting. 
No, it's I not. Want people to get on the web. No, marketing is about educating people with with maybe a sales goal in mind, but like not necessarily right away. Marketing to me is just is like communicating your products and services, you know, some some useful information, stuff like that, and letting people make their own decisions. It's not manipulating people. This is why people don't like marketers because people like this guy. But on the webinar with the documentary tonight. What do I need to say to get that person to show up? That's where our mind always needs to go. Well, if you just say what the thing is, and if they want to show up, they will. Need to go. What do I need to say? Say what you need to say. I wrote up say. the script I just gave you. Is it the best script? No. Is it a perfect script? No. Is it what I can? I wrote a script. You literally wrote four sentences. <laughs> like, do you want another cookie, Brian? Good boy. You wrote a script. Came up with yes. Could you come up with something better? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Am I mediocre at my job? Yes. Did I technically do it? Also, yes. <laughs> uh, let me ask you guys, just to, let me see your eyeballs real quick. Uh, Thank you. Good, good eyeballs. All right. Would you agree that if your teammates were on here right now, that they would actually be doing IPA to build their business right now because they're on here with us, right? No, because they're supposed to be giving you their undivided attention. If they're on here, they'd be doing what we're doing. If they're not on here, 99% chance they're not building their business at this very moment. Who cares if they are at this very moment? You might be in bed at like 10 PM, but maybe that's when they're building their business. Like why why do people have to be working at the same hour or at the same time that you are that's the power of a power hour that's a power of the vault and what i'm trying to do for you guys is to get what i'm trying to do for you guys we're we're promoting your stuff for free what how is this helping us give you all kinds of different value opportunities one of which is for you to come here and bring your team, hopefully you've got some of your team members that are a part of the vault as well, bring them into these power hours so I can teach them activities for- You're teaching me how to send a four sentence script that you said is mediocre at best. How is this valuable? We're 27 minutes you, in. Right? Wouldn't it be cool if Jim Rohn grabbed a hold of 10 or 20 of your team members and started just pouring into them and teaching them and growing them? I hate the pouring into. Please don't pour anything into me, okay? I already am made up of like 90 something percent water. I'm good. I don't need anything poured into me. For you? Well, he's not around anymore. He passed away. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if this dead guy would pour into your team? Oh, he can't. He's dead. Why did you bring it up then? But whoever, you know, if, if, if I could be one of the people that can help build your people for you. Wouldn't it be cool if this dead guy could talk to your people? Well, he can't. So I'm the next best thing. <laughs> then they will go out there and be motivated to go out and blow up their business. <laughs> this All right, guy. Sandra Phillips has two. Love it. He loves it. Good job, everyone. Promoting my stuff for free to your now, networks. Some of you guys don't have very big teams. And Michael Capardia has got a very successful business. I know some of your teams are little, but this Michael guy has a very big business. Big time leader who's doing this right now. Big time. Awesome. Lou has four OKs so far. Four yes. Four yeses for Michael Cabernet. All right. I see Lou and uh, Michael are, are neck and neck here. Neck Sandra, and neck. Who's going to win? Got passed. All right. We're going to take a little bet. Who's going to win? Lou or Michael? I think Michael's going to win because he keeps saying his full name. Keep it going. This documentary. I can't wait for you to see it. Um, you will not need coffee. Matter of fact, you you will need alcohol. <laughs> probably going to need to do some melatonin or whatever you need. Melatonin, or you're going to need tequila for this one. You do afterward to be able to go to sleep because your mind's going to be racing. You're going to be so excited about what you're a part of with network marketing. God, this is so culty. Can you imagine? Like, you're going to watch this video and it's going to like psych you up to be part of this community. It's like, oh, why do? Why do we need propaganda? After you watch it tonight. <laughs> they're part of our job, you guys. Why don't you do something else while they're doing this thing? Um, 
what we do in network marketing is we need to help people to discover the goodness that we know is here. Do people we? Don't know it. People aren't, aren't, people aren't um, intentionally, um, I, I wouldn't say somebody's stupid if they don't get network marketing. Oh, you wouldn't? <laughs> That's so charitable of you. <laughs> They're just, they're just ignorant to what it is. <laughs> they're not stupid. They're just ignorant. Ignorance, ignorance is just not knowing. So we, we should never, ever get mad at somebody for putting down network marketing because they've got, they've got a, 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 their frame of reference has led them to that conclusion their frame of reference, uh, their research, their own personal experiences, the experiences of people they know, the income disclosure statements these companies provide. All these things have led them to think what they're doing. But you know what? This one 52-minute video, it's under an hour. This one 52-minute video is going to change their whole mind about it. Seeing you guys... <laughs> Seeing you guys work for me for free. Doing the promoting activity and getting responses. It's just awesome. Okay, is it income producing? They're agreeing to watch a 52 minute video. They have not agreed to buy anything. They have not agreed to sign up. They are agreeing to watch a movie. So how is this income producing? Gloria's it's got not. three team members and three new contacts. And now, now are those invites or are those people who have said, yes, I'm coming, I'll be there. Let us know that. Or if those are this, uh, the six messages that you've sent out so far. So watch, why aren't you? <laughs> That was such an awkward way to eat cashews. I don't know. You could just put them individually in your mouth. Or you could just turn off your video for a second. Gloria is showing you guys how it's done. It's too bad that as a woman, she will never be seen as a leader in the network marketing community. <laughs> I'm going to put on some light music. Okay, great. I bet if he's going to put on some light music, okay. There are two things that could go wrong here, all right? One is that he shares the music on his computer, but he doesn't share the audio to Zoom, so we can't hear it. Or it's going to be copyrighted music that we don't have permission to be broadcasting. I guess I'll see what it is when I hit play here. To entertain us while we're going. Let me see what I've got in here. You don't have playlists ready to go for this sort of thing? What kind of scammer are you? Jeez, even I have Zoom playlists for when I run events. I cut out the recording after, so you can't hear it. Yeah, we, we have, can't. Uh, 14 minutes left until the contest will end. We'll announce a winner. And we're also going to, at that point, do a contest and a drawing. I think he's playing off his phone because what happens otherwise is... If the Zoom, if the audio is playing and you talk, it mutes the audio so that you can talk, right? Like if you're presenting. And I think the reason it's playing in the background is because I think it's on his phone playing in the background. We can't even hear it. <laughs> also, if it was playing through his computer, he could mute his mic and play the song through his computer and people would be able to hear it. Yeah, we've only been in a pandemic for like two and a half years and your entire business is online. Why would you have learned how to share music on a Zoom call? All right, back to the music. <laughs> he muted the, the microphone, but the music is get playing on his phone so we can't hear it. And he has no idea. Thanks for uh, asking permission before you took people's picture. Super classy there. I have not been in the chat. You're just uh, Casper the ghost, staying silent, not playing in the reindeer games. With They're working. Why do they have to be in chat? They're sending messages. The rest of the reindeer. I know you might feel like Rudolph. You're not like the other reindeer. But guess what? Santa Claus loves reindeer, but he loves Rudolph the most. Why do people have to be saying what they're doing if they're in the middle of doing it? So get in God. here. This is Come like a, in. This is Come like if Michael chat. Scott Tell was on. Like, you're doing something. 
because if we don't hear from you in the chat that you're doing something, then we figure you're playing Candy Crush or you're answering emails. I'm playing a water pouring game, okay? And in that case, you might as well not be here with us right now. <laughs> you don't have to be condescending, okay? This is like if Michael Scott was like on a weird MLM power so trip. Get in the chat. Let us know what you're doing. Great stuff. The chat's blowing up, guys. Good stuff. The chat's blowing up because they've actually had time to get responses. It's not because of your passive aggressive sales talk. I can tell you that. It's going to be a productive Saturday for some of you guys. For some of you. Just because you're here does not mean you're being productive until you're getting results. But at the beginning, he was like, most people are not putting the time in their business like you are. So what is it? Is it that these people are doing amazing things by giving time to their business or is it that what they're doing doesn't matter unless they get results <laughs> don't sing brian don't sing gary got a maybe oh. you guys are getting results let us know so far how many messages that you think you sent out to get the number you got so Let if Barry sent out three in no response yet, that's, I, I would expect that. I mean, to, to get three yeses, how many messages do you need to send? That's what I always wonder with network marketing. How many messages did you need to send to get one yes? Let them finish their work, Brian. I will say, Brian, if you ever need um, a less low energy song for your power hours, I have an immaculate invoicing vibes playlist on YouTube that might work well. Just going to plug that here. Five minutes. The longest hour of my life. Three minutes. The key to network marketing is when you have small windows of time, how much can you get done in a small window? I want you guys to understand what I just said. How much you can squeeze into small windows of time. So when I was done my beginning, my teaching and setting this whole thing up, you basically had about what? 20 some, 25 minutes to be doing this, I, this IPA. It's not producing income. In that 25 minutes, how many people are you going to get to say yes? That means you got to like be fast, quick draw McGraw. I mean, send out cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste. Exactly what people I'm sure want from you is to feel like they're just a number in your Rolodex. Awesome. Transactional relationship. Love that for you. I keep looking up and seeing him staring at me. It's so weird. <laughs> he doesn't realize his music's on mute, I'm guessing. Creepy guy. In another life, I would have been a parody songwriter. I wish I could sing. If so, the world would not be ready. <laughs> I want to do one on creepy guy. Yeah, he, you're on mute, Brian. No one can hear you. Yeah, keep it on mute. I don't want to hear you sing. Just like no one wants to hear me sing. <laughs> the Gloria 13, Lou has got 11. Anybody else have any? I don't know if Michael Cabardia is still in the house. I know he was uh, running for it. Michael, did you leave? Come on. All right. Well, it looks like the winner is going to be Gloria. Oh. So, Gloria, if you would uh, go ahead and shoot me your physical mailing address, and I'm going to be sending you this hardcover edition of Building an Empire. Signed copy. That will be heading your way. Congratulations. Good stuff. All right. Next. I'm going to... So, my kids... I uh, love to snack. Apparently, you also love to snack. Uh, of course, we're very diligent parents. We like to make sure they eat well. 
while while they love don't give them weird food stuff oh these little organic like pouches they are they're like little squeezy pouches and they've got uh different fruits and vegetables and so uh this is what the top of the pouch looks like you guys see that you turn this off the top then you then you suck it right out of the pouch this is the top of it this right here was on our countertop and this is how many my kids ate in about no joke <laughs> <laughs> probably about about a month and a half okay probably about that long so what we're gonna do right now is whoever guesses the number because i can't my wife and i counted these whoever guesses the number in this massive flower vase and by the way look how big it is it's it's, it's pretty big okay if you guess the number i'm going to send you the physical locker room training, which you guys get um, this program inside of the box. Locker room training? Anyway, but there are CDs and DVDs in the physical ah! product, which unless you bought it for $497, you guys don't have the- Of course it's $497. The physical product, by the way, it's, 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 a, be it's a beautiful case. So I'm gonna send you a signed uh, edition of that. If you guys like this video, I will send you a case of 8-track tapes. <laughs> I'm also going to send you a signed copy of these two books as well. I'm not sure if you guys have read them, but it's kind of neat just to have one from the author. So uh, you're going to get all three of those for whoever is... A I'm giving you some free products that I can't sell. <laughs> first to guess the number of these pouch tops that are in this vase, put it in the chat below and whoever actually gets the number is going to win it. 96. I'm gonna start scrolling down until I see the number. Oh my God. If this goes on long, I promise I'll fast forward. <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a, 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 a clue. It's above 200 and under 400. Oh. Holy cow. That This household spends a lot on their organic snacks, huh? It's between 200 and 400. Okay, then 216. What's with all the bummer music, man? Oh, so close to me, guys. Is this a certain kind of playlist that you save for special uh, times, is Brian? Off by just a few. Oh, somebody's off by one. Scrolling. Oh, Howard Haslett. Howard Haslett, 342. Howard. Wow. Howard, raise your hand, your digital hand, if you would. Imagine, okay, minimum a dollar, right, for these things? Maybe a little less than that, but imagine spending $300 on snack pouches in a month and a half. This guy's got MLM money. <laughs> raise your digital hand, Howard, if you can. I wonder Where how many. There you go. All right, perfect. I wonder how many people are on this call. I want to ask it. Are you able to turn your your video on? Are we going to hear from Howard? So we're not going to hear from the person who made the most calls and most sales. We're going to hear from Howard who guessed the right number of tops in a jar. Okay, <laughs> seems logical. I'm not sure if you're somewhere, Howard. There. Okay. Well, uh, Howard, you, you you look different than I expected. It's my husband's Zoom. That's why it didn't go on on video. Oh, okay. Well, good. Well, good to see you on. Tell everybody who you are and where are you? I'm in Ajax, Ontario, just east of Toronto. And your first name? My first name is Jacqueline, and my last name is Awesome. Well, hey, congratulations. <laughs> and uh, it's awesome that you, that you, I mean, look, can you imagine eating 340? I love how Jacqueline is higher energy than this guy and is making way less money on this call than him. Two of those pouches, those kids were eating like literally four and five a day. It's all we could do to just clam them up and get them on. <laughs> they just want to pouch after pouch. Anyway, so uh, we'll be sending you. It turns out she has to be in Canada. So I'm going to have to pay about $480 in shipping. to. 
Listen, you're the one who offered this as a giveaway. This sounds like a you problem. And the physical stuff up there. <laughs> might as well get on a horse and start riding and bring it up there. But anyway, we're going to get it to you. Yeah. Then just say it was only for people in the U.S. then if you don't want to ship it. God, these people uh, are. You want it fair and square, so that's awesome. Can you have multiple millions of dollars. Like, why can't you just spend a few bucks to send something to Canada? Congratulations. Jesus. And uh, how long have you been in network marketing for? I've been with legal. Oh, sorry. I've been uh, 30, well, it's 13 years. Lucky 13. 13 years. That's awesome. And what province are you in? I'm in Ontario. All right. You don't know where Toronto is? Jeez. Right, fantastic. And how long have you been on part of the vault for? Um, oh, three, four months. Okay, good. You don't even know the people in your vault? These people are paying you money. Like, you don't know who they are? Have you been able to go, get into the back office and go through any of the training programs or anything yet? You know, you could just look her up. No, I haven't. I, I, I haven't been well for the last while, so All right. I'm, get, I'm getting back into things. All right, you're doing better. You seem like you're you seem like you're happy and healthy right I now. I am now, yeah. <laughs> I got a whole lot better. Fantastic. That's excellent. Well, congratulations and again, uh I'll why not talk to the person who sent all the messages and got people to RSVP? I would encourage you to get into the back office and you know, even if it's just like one program a week. Some of them are like an hour long, some of them are five hours long, but uh, you know, give yourself Can you imagine this guy for five hours? Some time to go grab some of that content because it will really help out your business in a, in a, in a profound way. So good stuff. Congratulations. And guys, all of you, as we wrap up the final minute here of this, uh, you know, empire builders power hour, again, you guys were invited and you're the only ones invited because you're a part of the empire builders vault. So everything I ever do is going to be put into the vault. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And he's going to also upload it to YouTube for free. Yeah, I've got other stuff that I'm working on for the rest of this year. I've got a whole bunch of different things that I'll be doing. I just had a camera crew here uh, last week. Some really cool stuff. And um, I just, you know, I, I, what I, what I, here's what I ask of you. Here's what I ask of you. Please shoot me a note. Yeah, you, you promoted my program for free. You're paying to be a part of my program. And I'm going to ask you to do this favor at the end of this call because you haven't done enough for me yet. Shoot me an email. Just let me know uh, what it is that you need help with. Tell me um, what it is that I have helped you with because I, I need to know, like, am I, am I helping? Am I making a difference in your life, in your business? Tell me what you've learned so far from anything we've done live, uh, from my books, from my training programs that are back there. Um, are you using the Empire Builders Pro app, the EV Pro app? Are you using that? My God, there's an app to put people, your prospects into the follow-up campaign so they can see, you know, my digital making my first 10 million book so they can watch my three videos on why they should become an entrepreneur. Have you been using what's in your possession? Most people have not even scratched the surface of the stuff I'm making available to them. So I just want to encourage you, please let me know what it is that you're using, what it is you've got value from so far so I can see because look, if you got value from a certain program or a certain part of the app or whatever, I want to know so I can tell other people, hey, here's what other people are getting value from. This might might be what you what will make a difference in your business. Um, and again, if you have something that I have not put together uh, so far that, that you need some help with, shoot me a note. And the next time we do a training, I will bring you up, bring it up, and I will answer that question and uncover some uh, some ideas for you. Why not let them type it in the Zoom chat and then you can export the chat after. Save them a step for having to message you. All right, guys. Well, if you guys want to do this, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Say hello, say goodbye, and have a great rest of your weekend. Say hello, say goodbye. All right. I'm sorry I had to cut us off. That was getting ridiculous. Um, what I wanted to do was look at, if you go on his Facebook, he has some links, right? So the first one to his website, which we expect. Now, these other ones seem kind of weird. So this first one, I clicked on it. I'm like, oh, it's a Google link. What does it do? Oh, it just brings you to a Google search of his name. <laughs> so weird. Um, I guess maybe he's worried he can't spell his last name. The second link goes to his author page on Amazon. And what's really interesting, 
no, I do not want to one click buy this. Is like, why does this stuff have good ratings? I don't understand. Like, why does it have five star ratings? Loved it. If you have an interest in multi level marketing, Brian Carruthers building an empire works the way a bracing tonic does when your spirits sag from a long string of no prospecting responses. Ew. Okay, that tells me everything I need to know about this book. All right, let's go down the list here. His Goodreads author profile. Most of them are not brave enough to link this. Um, again, his stuff doesn't have terrible reviews. So I don't know if like his books are actually good or not. I haven't read them, but his video content certainly has something to be desired. All right, so now I want to look at this series of links that are below his Amazon links and his link to his Google search because there's some really weird ones in here. So let's start with dailycaller.com. Now this uh, tool I'm using is called I Can Look Up. We can see who owns the domain name. Um, so this is privately registered, um, on GoDaddy. So we don't know who owns this particular website, ibtimes.co.uk. So let's look up that one. All right. So the second domain we're looking up is ibtimes.co.uk. registrant redacted for privacy okay so we can't see who owns this website interesting all right so the next one to look up is timesofisrael.com this is uh let's see pdr ltd doing business as domain public domain registry.com so registered by a corporation that buys domains so we can't see who owns it and Let's look it up. The last one, mid-day.com. So, okay. So domain control, I think that's GoDaddy. Registration private. Now you might ask yourself, what's the point of me just looking up a series of domains that are all like privately registered, right? So what I thought I would do is like, let's look up an actual newspaper, right? And as you see here, we have an actual company wp company llc um and we have a administrative a registrant and a technical contact and it just seems a lot more legit than the private register thing right so let's look up all right let's look up another one nytimes.com okay so we have this registered by the new york times company and um, hostmaster at nytimes.com, technical contact. So there we go. I guess what I'm saying is if you're an actual website that has nothing to hide, like you could have your company's LLC or even your name showing up here, right? So to me, all of these links aren't really worth much because I don't know who owns the website. And uh, yeah, let's look at. Now, if you go here, it looks like a real news website, right? Like there's banner ads that look weird. Um, and it looks like, though, all these websites will pretty much run an article if probably you pay them enough money to do it. Like look at all these ads on both sides as we scroll down. Uh, and it just seems like a real spammy website. So if you got actual press, you should be proud to get actual press, but linking to these articles on weird websites where we don't know who owns them is just plain weird. So what did we learn from uh, Brian Carruthers? Well, we didn't really learn much of anything. Basically, he got a bunch of people who are paying him to be in his vault program to come on this call and then do a bunch of free marketing for him to their downlines to come and watch a video on his platform. So I'm not really sure what they got out of it or why they like him so much. Um, it seems like his books are well-received and I, again, I haven't read them, but based on 
his condescension throughout this video and his even lack of knowledge about how to run a Zoom call, I'm not really sure how much he can teach you. I will say if you look on this YouTube channel where you're watching this now, I have playlists, uh, not just the Immaculate Invoicing Vibes playlist, uh, which I'm slowly building, you know, for that work montage that we sometimes all need to do to get our administrative stuff done. But also I have playlists about like social media marketing, websites and that kind of thing that I think will be infinitely more useful than the, what this guy has behind a paywall. I can't say that for sure, but I'm pretty sure. And it's so funny because I just, I just keep discovering more and more of these people. And I can't believe A, that they exist and B, that they have any kind of platform where people listen to them. I just think that Brian is a pretty mediocre white guy who has learned that he can make a lot more money coaching network marketing people than doing network marketing himself. Because let's face it, if he believed in the business model, he would be in a network marketing company too, raking in the millions of dollars that uh, he seems to think that his training is worth. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you have gurus that you want me to react to, you can leave it as a comment on this video. If you're more shy or have other things you want to talk about, you can use the contact form on my website that goes to me and I see it, which is lovely. And if you like this sort of thing, there is a whole Nicole Reacts playlist on the YouTube channel, as well as a Nicole Reacts section of our blog, which is on your screen right now, wherever you like to go watch things, binge things, doesn't matter to me. Um, but I do one of these every week, every Friday. Um, and my boyfriend's like, do you think you're ever going to run out of these people? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I've got like 45 in my watch later section of YouTube um, that I haven't even touched yet. So I don't think I'll run out. But if there's people you want me to do or a reaction to, or if you have like a topic or something, I'm super interested in hearing what you want because yeah, otherwise it's like talking to the void, right? So I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, don't let these gurus scam you because now you've got a friend in the marketing business and I will air out their BS all day long. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>